and welcome to another episode of More Than Dice. I'm Gonzo. I'm John. I'm Kathy. <laughs> uh, I was waiting for John to come John. back. John's not that's here, John. but he's right John there. John is there. He's there here. he comes. There he is. Party without me. He's starting it at you. <laughs> Partying up, John. <laughs> ah, nose is all itchy. Um, welcome to episode 202. Uh, today we're going to be talking about um, events, local, large, small, gaming, and Gonzo is going to be painting on stream, uh, working on a Warcaster vehicle um, during the stream. But before we do that, we have our sponsors to thank. We want to thank Muse on Minis for hosting all of our channel stuff and getting it out there for everybody to see and hear. Um, they have our audio version that you can find. Um, and also you can find out, uh, you can find our podcast on any and all type of networks. Just do a quick Google search and they're there. Um, and we also want to thank, uh, mini masterworks. Um, make sure you go check them out. You can get 10% off your order, which they do have some great products. Um, and we thank the people that have already started ordering stuff. Uh, it means a lot. Um, I think that's it. You were measuring rather than just doing it live. <laughs> yes. You didn't want to. You don't want to do it. You didn't want to get your drink and just like do like most people do. Oh, just a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and oh, a lot of this. Measuring. Yeah. Yeah. Don't just right? eyeball Is he that. Just shit? eyeball. What is what's measuring, precious? That's what B wants to know. That's how you make your drinks consistently good. <laughs> Not just oh fuck, that's too much of this. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. <laughs> I guess Heathens up in this bee. With that, my heart. Let, let's go. Let's go ahead and discuss our drinks. Uh, as I get Kathy, uh, she's drinking. Kathy, what are you drinking tonight? I'm drinking uh, gin and tonic with Bombay Sapphire gin because that is my favorite one. And uh, yeah, what, and, what's uh, the measurements on that, Kathy? I eyeballed it. <laughs> <It's a> heathen. <laughs> I'm the heathen. Oh, oh no. Also, oh. I am a barbarian, widely known fact. Fair. Barbarians eyeball things. They don't measure them. John, what are you drinking tonight with your, uh, your perfectly measured and calculated uh, drink? Uh, well, technically, it would be a, uh, a uh, blood orange martini, which is going to be basically... Uh, uh, two to one vodka and blood orange mix. Then plus I throw in uh, some uh, triple sec and uh, a splash, a dash of uh, bitters. Uh, well, that for sounds really good. Yes, and this was four parts, so I had to measure four times. Fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> sounds good. See, it does depend on what you're drinking. I, exactly. I measured if mine. It's just a gin and tonic. It's like, all right, put in a yeah, How many fingers then... is that, Gonzo? Uh, two, roughly two fingers. Two fingers, yep. Yeah. See, measurements. Mostly what I do is I just tend to just go, mm, yeah, I wouldn't drink all that uh, during the podcast. Well, well, I'll you, give I don't, you two fingers. I don't have a lot left to, uh, I could give them two fingers too, uh, a lot left to drink, <laughs> so I have to, have to uh, portion it out properly because my lazy ass has not gotten to any stores recently. So, I'm drinking, of course, uh, McCollin Scotch, uh, like usual. Um, and everything. Hey, Ford Fitch. Uh, before we get our, our cheers and everything on, do we have any shout outs this week, John? Yes. Boy, do we. Yeah. Uh, fr Friday was some motherfucker. It was a Friday or Thursday. Thursday and Friday were motherfucker. Yeah. Meatloaf and Louis Anderson. Meatloaf. Yeah. yeah now, that was... and, and Louis Anderson. Now, they're both heavier set guys. You're not like super surprised, but Louis Anderson was much younger than I thought. Well, I, yeah, guess, yeah. I guess he was fighting cancer is what was going on that I, I read that he was fighting uh, cancer for a bit. They're they're so good at hiding that stuff nowadays. Mm -hmm. Like, like respect their privacy, absolutely. Yep. Uh, but meatloaf passing does bring up something where some people were just like basically being bitches because apparently he's a bit of a wackadoo as far as, uh, you know, conspiracy theories and all. But man still died. It's still not okay. Yeah. You know, people are allowed to be crazy. They don't. They, they don't look for us tonight. We all crazy. 
you know, you don't have to agree with this, but, uh, uh, you know, you do want to show some empathy. You know, man made, made made two great records, and the third one I haven't heard and was told it was eh. But the two he made were just fucking great. Bad out of hell and bad out of two. The first are, one iconic, I would say. Absolutely. Even though that wasn't his big, not, not, not his biggest hit, because I would do anything for love was his biggest hit. Yeah, that was. Which, and he has such. Even, I mean, while it was good, I would say that it wasn't. Even the best song as, on that record. As bad out of hell, the album. <laughs> bad out of hell is a great album of all of it you honestly know, bad out of hell like, 2 is, is a good album too it's really good like, yeah 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 that's what i'm saying it's not bad it's still good but the the first album's just i i remember the first time i heard it i was just blown away it was I, I, amazing i always get warm thoughts for the local uh radio station because they played meatloaf on fair rotation which you know a lot of stations don't because he's really weird and has a lot of long songs yeah the songs are usually pretty long yeah so i appreciate that because it expands my expanded my horizon it got me into his sort of version of you know what operatic rock almost you know but yeah, it's like yeah. songs are telling a story i mean he's great and he will be missed and louis he anderson had a great voice he had a great yeah. range and louis anderson was a heck of a comedian very funny guy Ooh. and uh he will also be missed Yeah, it, it, when I saw him, he was. I looked up what was going on, and it was. They said that he had been battling cancer for a while, which, of course, nobody knew. And fuck cancer. Yeah. In case anyone was look wondering. Up, look up Louis Anderson on uh, YouTube. I, there have to be some comedy bits of his on YouTube. He was amazing. He was an amazing comedian. That's you, Banyan. It's got to be Banyan. Gonzo's doing nothing. Gonzo's got a little bit of sound issues in his own headphones, but that's his own fault. I gotta crank it up a little bit so I can hear everybody. So, other than that, um, they they will be missed. Um, guys, make sure that you're washing your hands still. Make sure you're still wearing a mask when you're going out and you have to go out. Um, make sure if you haven't gotten your booster, get your booster because we know you got your uh, vaccine. Um, be careful around everybody. We... Uh, need to... That could have been me changing the volume on the computer, by the way. Um, I didn't hear him. That's weird. Yeah, that's, I didn't hear I didn't even hear him on my end. I bet that's you it was just the desktop That's because we're not hearing his desktop audio, but when his PC makes sound, Fair. it goes through. Yeah, so that's probably what it was. Um, there you go. Just be careful out there, guys. Make sure that you get everything done. Make sure you're protecting yourself. Uh, make sure that you're healthy so we can see you at HugCon 2022, a.k.a. Adepticon, um, where we can all kind of hang out and give hugs if we feel appropriate and, you know, make sure everybody's yes, nice and happy. Yes, if we feel appropriate. Yeah. yeah. So, other than that, cheers. Cheers. Cheers, everybody. On a hot summer night, you offer your throat to the wolf with the red roses. <laughs> I bet you say that to all the guys. <laughs> I listened to that album uh, to and from work uh, this week afterwards. <laughs> Beanie on his shirt. Yay. I'm not sure how many hugs I'll be giving at HugCon this year. <laughs> I I had hoped it would be more. We will see what the situation warrants at the time. Uh, I I hope to be giving out hugs anyways. All right. So I've learned that um, this does not keep the camera positions and everything that I've had because uh, as you can tell it's really really bright right now is it I can't is tell. it I mean it's it's less bright now I can tell that and the zoom wasn't in and it kept went back to autofocus did it uh did your computer restart no that's so, so, so weird it won't keep hmm. this is a model I'm going to paint on is it? Are you using Logic Capture or are you using the other Logitech software? Because there's a difference. Uh, I'm not using any, so I've noticed that it will do. It will switch to itself whenever it'll it'll switch things up. 
Hmm. I see what you mean. That doesn't look anything like your other models as far as the blue. Oh, yeah. It completely yeah. Oh, changed. wow. That's really pretty, though. Oh, yeah. yeah that's cool. Yeah. Uh, so it was something I was going to talk about after I got the camera kind of fixed up and done. Um, okay. There we go. That looks a whole lot Oh, you, you painted a clear stand, too. I, yeah, I'm just going to take alcohol and rub it all off. Oh, okay. Huh. I've got uh, some Q-tips. Huh. Pointy Q-tips. Just don't there. use any of the good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a sticky Q-tip in my Macallan. Unless I'm sticking it in my <laughs> mouth afterwards. Okay. So, um... Get that positioned. So you can see my face. So, something I learned um, this week, and I've already repainted over them, but this is definitely not the color that I painted on stream originally uh, from last week. So, what I did is I took and I used that new Vortex thing and really shook the stuff up. And... It went from a very light shimmery purple to a very blue and shimmery. Blue with a purple shimmer. Like it's supposed to be. And it turned out, I was like, I, I, I got one model and I went, this doesn't look like it. So I grabbed the two that I already painted, looked at them and went, yeah, this is not the same color. Oh, do you have one handy? Can you show us the difference? I don't. I changed them. I already changed them, but let me oh. see. Give me one second. I think I've got a picture of it and I can just kind of show the picture. Maybe that'll help because when I did it, I was like, Whoa, this is completely different and shows how much you really, really have to shake up your paints. Um, well, also a good note. Those are really cool colors and you can use them for other things as well. You don't have to just use the pure color shift to, the core colors are pretty cool. They get this cool effect on a lot of things. I used it on Hawkeye and ended up, you know, against what they suggest. I didn't worry about it being color shift. I washed it afterwards, which is generally a no-no. I sealed it afterwards, but it still looks cool just as a sort of this ready bronze uh, bit on his uh, on his base. Yeah, kind so, of. Good to remember, no matter what the instructions say, test out your colors and other stuff. Yeah, you really can't tell. But it so was different. Yeah, I mean, you could tell, but it's not as, you know, as easily. But That's pretty pronounced to me. It, it was, when, once I got the, t the model down there, I said, um, I was like, oh, wow, this has got to do it. So, I mean, I just pulled out, you know, my airbrush that I do priming with and reprimed it over those. Like, here was the one that I originally did, and I was like, oh, yeah, yay. And then I was like, oh, because you can still see some of the green. And so I was like, mm. so I had to reprime and started painting on this one. But I did finish this one up. And this is the one that I really wanted to paint up because this model with his dual blades and everything. Are you going to steal the black at all? No, I actually like the, um, the very dull matte look to it. Okay, because it's funny, I was actually going to suggest exactly the opposite. I was going to suggest taking gloss varnish and carefully brushing it on the black to make it glossier. I think it would fit better, but in uh -huh. my opinion. Yeah, I like the, the dull look to it and the, the matte look. It is look. a nice contrast between the matte and the shiny. Yeah, it makes it really stand out and makes it situated the way it was. Because I originally was going to do the blades the green but there's holes in the blades so i was like oh you wouldn't be able to tell you know it really wouldn't look that cool so i was like oh let's do the blades black i also changed the instead of doing brown i did like a gray rock you know yeah the thing. base looks good yeah just a quick i mean all this is quick and dirty and easy um doesn't take much to it this uh this model i actually changed it up these um rockets are actually supposed to be pointed up here's a here's a generic one this is actually a character model um the duchess and here's the normal one and so i flipped i mean aside from the bike looking different it doesn't really look much like a character well the character on top has is, is a different model and has a different gun there's not much different it just changed the character on it um 
but and you can tell a slight difference in color yeah this one too this one's a little bit Once, darker than this one yeah yeah but uh we're getting a little more color shift through the camera on the dark one too yeah they both look good yeah you they, they look more uniform compared to what it was because i mean here is like this one's really dark um, and I did do that test where I used, um, shiny and dull coat, uh, the shiny primer and, you know, normal primer or gloss primer. This one was the gloss primer. So that may be what it was. Hmm. This one may, this one was the gloss primer. So it could have been what it was, but, uh, this is a special character for Warcaster called the Duchess and the Duchess has uh, a special, a couple of special abilities and such. So, I thought that was interesting. Oh man, I got the hiccups now. But I also did the little objective marker. That's it. You get. And then what's called a matlet. It's just. You gotta put uh, that on a base or something. No, it doesn't go on a base. Uh, it just sits like there. That's the reason. Why, that's the reason why it's there. It's the base is at. I'd probably uh, get just a thin base of something just to put it on just because it'll look better. Yeah. It'd stand better too. Uh, and this is a mantlet that I'm going to do a little bit of repainting on the green because it didn't come out right. Uh, but this is a shield that you can deploy when you deploy your troops. Pink. Super cheap. Super easy. Type thing. And so that, those were the ones I was doing kind of the test on because I was like, I, you don't have to have those except for the matlet if you're going to use it. But I decided uh, I'll do that. So I'm going to block out the white on this that I want to put and add the green to because that takes a while to dry. So I can do that. Yeah, and, and my suggestion to everyone watching, remember, if you're using these paints, you have to be super mega careful mm -hmm. when you're doing the details because you fuck something up, it's going to be fucked up. Yeah, you have to reprime over it, re-put the thing. I've it never is, tried brushing it, but it, brushing it does not look good. It's a big downside to it. Actually, I think yeah. uh, either I'll borrow uh, Banyan's shaker when make paint shaker when he comes in or I'll get one of my own. And I'll try one of those on like a Battletech mech or something where you don't have to do a lot of details on it. Speaking of which, I need to buy more brushes because my brushes are getting a little rough. Hmm. I was looking for new brushes uh, in my brushes the other day, and I didn't realize that I had a whole, I had a whole uh, jar full of them sitting like two feet away from me to my <laughs> left. They were there. After my stream, I just glanced over there and I'm like, oh, there's like 10 new brushes sitting right there. So. Also, if you can't find them uh, at the, the art store or the hobby store or the game store or on Amazon, Dick Flick, if you order right from Dick Flick, has a lot of brushes. All kinds. Like, I mean, yeah, like, I was going to go to a store for this? Nah. Nah. If I go to the store, I just buy Army Painter Cheapo brushes because they do the job and they're cheap. Otherwise, it's yeah. totally going to look online. We have um, been ordering a ton of, well, paint, brushes, whatever, on Dick Blick. Uh Well, we've ordered from them for a long time, but lately, because we don't want to go out into the world... <laughs> Uh, and also, Amazon seems to be always either sold out or prices are more expensive on Amazon for these brushes that we like than oh, yeah, they the... are at Dick Blick. So, well, Dick Blick's going to charge you shipping, and Amazon's going to be like, free shipping. No. You're like, really? No, no, like over a certain amount, which when you're buying a bunch of brushes, you easily make. Uh, it's free shipping over the, and I think it's only like 30 or 50 bucks or something. So oh, they don't have yeah. brushes anymore. Been good. I highly recommend and not just like not fancy brushes either, because you know, I don't use fancy brushes. 
And Jim uses even less fancy brushes than I use. Okay. He loves his number eight craft brush. That was really fucking odd. Oh, here we go. Just looking at brushes on, uh, wait, so what companies are terrible to order from? All of like, them. No. I don't like, know. I can only tell you we've had great experiences with Dick Blick. Just trying to remember if someone did something stupid and I need to avoid them. No. Hobby Lobby. Well, I know Hobby Lobby. <laughs> yeah, we all know that one. <laughs> That's a whole different story. Monument Hobbies okay? Yeah. Um, Redgrass Games. They have some brushes. Oh, Redgrass. God, why wouldn't I look at that? Thank you. Uh, Redgrass is good. Monument Hobbies is good. Monument's okay. I was looking at them. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what the prices are. He gave me a set for free. I haven't tried them out yet, though. You should try them out. So I know if they're good or not. All right, hold on. Oh, AK Interactive. Yes, those are the guys. Thank you, Legion. Poor life choices. Let's see which one. Uh, let's go with this one. This is Ooh, Redgrass they are, Games. They are definitely... Oh, their dry brushes are a really good price. Their other stuff, a little bit... Number on the two. premier price. Number two? That's your main this, miniature painting brush, according to their website. This is Redgrass Green. Number two. We'll test this out. Who does this number two work for? Redgrass Green's number one work for. Ah. Like, if it holds a tip, I mean, holds a point, that's good enough, because honestly. So, what's funny is the interesting thing you're about talking about, you know, making sure you don't... This one's going to be a little too thick to get in these little crevices that I need to get in. That's um, what she said. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, number 2 Um, Using... So what I did is I mixed a white and then I used the white ink to kind of thin it down instead of like water or whatever. And it's been working. And one thing you can do is if you get a little bit of white on this, as long as you wipe it up as soon as you put it on there, it'll come right off. Yeah, I uh, used the white ink on uh, the door for that. Uh, oh, it's right here. On that construct base to sort of clean up so it got a little more clean white look. So the only thing that should be kind of purposefully gray is the dents. Because uh, I'm having a heck of a time painting it. So Another thing I need to use more, but I don't paint a lot of white because I'm not a masochist. <laughs> white is always a big pain. I was looking for alternative uh, paint schemes for Magneto. I found a couple and someone's like, here's his white look from this. I'm like, oh, the masochist version. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Yeah, I know there's no way I'd do the, the white Magneto. Uh, there's a version of him that's like that, just he's uh, uh, black instead. You want me to paint a white Magneto for you, John? Uh, no, you don't need to. I'll paint Magneto. It's fine. There, there's a version that has the, that's the same exact costume. It's just opposite. Instead of white with uh, black lines, it's black with white lines. And that's much easier to paint. I, I think it would be fun to do one that's half and half. You know, like Star Trek? I mean, yes, if you want to do that. Yeah, that would be interesting. <laughs> Baby Hunt says, yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> I hope we're going to send I'll Kathy and Magneto. Magneto White. Sure, sure. I, I, I'll paint my own. It's okay. I got up my game. If I, if I decide to do white, I need to do it to up my game. That was one of my hobby uh, uh, goals is to not shy away from stuff just because it's difficult and just because I really wanted to say fuck it on that car door and make it just a solid color. But mm -hmm. I just fucking kept going. I did white on the hair of my Holly monster that I was painting this week and people got to see me start out painting the uh, the white hair 
And they got to see me say, well, shit, I didn't know that she had white hair when I when I primed it. And when I did my uh, shading, you know, to to get the darkest darks and everything. And I did. I hadn't looked at the I hadn't looked at the uh, at the art for it yet. Uh, Silly me. If I had, I would have just started out priming the hair white because it would have been so much easier to work a little bit darker from white than to work up from this really dark brown color all the way up. And when I first started, I was like, oh, this is a lighter color. And then I would do the whole thing. And then I was like, that's still too dark. That's not that's not white. That's gray. So I did I did a lighter color in all the highlights. I basically painted over what I was doing like four times. But now the hair is to a point where I'm like, okay, now it's white. It's good. And then, and it took me no time at all to paint the Arctic Fox white after that. Uh, the thing about white that is a good rule of thumb is to just keep in mind that most of the shadows on your white are not going to be black. They're not going to be very dark at all. So I do uh, you, you a lot wanna... of my white. I use a uh, fortress gray, basically the old GW paint or mm-hmm. equivalent as the base for all the white. And then that's sort of my inherent shade to it. Yeah. And if you start out with a white primer, and and then you just paint white over that. As weird as that sounds, painting white over white primer is way easier than painting white over black primer. Okay. Uh, 100% well, yes. I mean, <laughs> and then, yeah, and then just white take primer your gray is, and is paint that mask. into the recesses. And uh, and I've found that that smoothing out white when it looks choppy and stuff is great if you water down white. And and just and paint that over the whole thing. And even if that that sort of watered down glaze of white gets into your darker areas, it's thin. So your darker areas are still going to show through, and and it will still for. be it will still be a shadow. And I will, use I use this for a lot of the, that, like you're saying. It's the ink. The, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I still haven't tried the ink yet. I like it. I, I, I'd like to see your opinion on it to see what yeah. you, what uh, you can think of with it because Metal John swore by it, but I wasn't really. I mean, I use it just to touch up the white, like as a as a top layer when it's not going as well as I'd like. I use it yeah, as a th- just, to thin I've white down. Just, yeah, I've always just watered down a little white for just a glaze over the top of my my white when I have like the Holly monster hair where I was like, well, I feel like the dark parts are still a little too dark maybe. And the white parts are a little choppy. So I'm going to just put this sort of glaze across the whole thing. And it sort of evens it out a little. Oh, Vince Ventrella swears by it. He probably has videos on YouTube on it too. So after I hear yeah, Kathy's opinion, yeah. I can uh, get his. I would be very. But I value ones more than the others. I'd be very interested to try that. I just haven't got my hands on it. They're not expensive. Imagine. Either. I don't remember them being I that expensive. I haven't been out to uh, art stores or hobby stores or anything like that in a while. I mean, it's on Amazon. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah, it is. That's where I got mine. Oh, good point. Also, probably Blick has it. So the next time I. Blick probably has it as well, yeah. The next time I order from Blick. Maybe Who makes we'll... it? Uh, Dollar and Rowney. D A L E R Rowney. Jayla Rowney. For... Or maybe we'll throw it in a care Jayla package. Rowney. Acrylic water resistant artist inks and sets. You should talk to Banyan if he really wants a white magneto. You should talk to him about that. I do commissions. Hey, you hear that, Banyan? She does commissions. It's almost like she's a professional painter. <laughs> almost. Almost. Uh, they really? Have they didn't have Payne's Gray? Um, that one? Yeah. 
see white in this little bunch of... Hmm. Yeah. But I had it. That's where I got it. It exists. Oh, man. I gotta replace this mat my chair rolls on. It's coming up. It's, it's dying, and I get little sticky bits in my... Busy panicking as I dip the base of Hulk poster in my primer puddle. They have Remember. a set of inks. They have a blue, a red, a green, a yellow, a magenta, it looks like. Or two different reds. I'm not sure exactly. Oh, it looks like magenta. Wonderful. And what looks like maybe a black. I guess I could read the description. What? <laughs> They have a set of neon colors. Ooh. They have a set of neon colors. Oh. A set of six one-ounce bottles containing every fluorescent color in the line, including red, yellow, green, blue, orange, and pink. I'm thinking Fluorescent for a... colors are not light fast. Thing to keep in mind with these. What does that mean? It means they will fade. Ah. Oh, okay. That's they will fade know. if they're uh, out in the light. I was thinking maybe Battletech models need to be fluorescent colors. Maybe that'd be... Of course, depending on where you put them. I mean, if they're always just in a box somewhere until you whip them out for a game, then there you go. You're fine. Excuse me while I whip this out. Exactly. <laughs> There's a primary there. color set. There you go. I don't know what Gonzo's talking, topic was, but we're talking about painting. We're talking about painting. Hey, we can talk about painting. I, it may surprise you to know that I could talk about painting for quite a while. What? I mean, you know what? If you're that good of a talk about painting, maybe you should have your own stream. Oh, we that's taste, a good maybe? idea. Maybe I should consider that. There you go. It's the next Shimmering level for your game. colors. They have a shimmering colors set. I wonder if that's like the shimmering, color shift. Shimmering blue, shimmering red, shimmering I bet it's like green, color shift. shimmering gold, velvet, violet, and I black. I mean, I like the name. Velvet, violet. That's my superhero name. I mean, it, that, those are some of my, that's like, violet's like my second favorite V word. Yes. If yeah, you're I'm wondering, asking, violence, my I'm first not one. Asking what you're not asking. <laughs> I don't want to know. I was like, yeah. I was Everyone knew it was violence. See, V was going to ask. V was going to ask because it might have been V, like Vlieger Dragon. I mean, that's my favorite V word. I mean, so that's when different. I think of V, I think of V. I mean, that's fair. But also because we have a lady at work we call V because her first name is uh, complicated. <laughs> Relencia or something like that. Like so. Drake, it goes, Kathy is my favorite C word. <laughs> oh. There. Oh my god, I'm dying. I mean, <laughs> Kathy's a close second to uh, my favorite C word. Which is? Cookie! And that's good enough for me. <gasps> he is for cookie. It's good. Where's our cookie? I want a cookie. I I, I ate all the cookies. Popeye's you has cookies now, have? and they're really good. But I have a... scones. Oh. My... I have Damn. cranberry orange scones sitting in the kitchen right now. I have super already... jelly. I've eaten my allotment for the day, though. Define allotment. Yeah, I was going to say, what's uh, allotment? My allotment for any given day of anything Wait. is the amount that I have or the ability to get my hands on. They're, they're small scones, and three is my allotment. I cannot eat more. I mean, I could. But... Which probably shouldn't. Exactly. Remember, as long as you understand the consequences, it's okay. Actions and consequences. <sighs> I know. It's tough. And I tell you, the uh, bitters in there, you can really smell it when you drink. It's great. 
What is Sorted Banyan? <laughs> Sorted Food. It's a uh, cooking channel in the UK. One of the guys has an allotment where he grows stuff, and he very oh. often gets stuff out of that to put in a dish, and it's like groans from the rest of the cast. Okay, British uh, gardening. Yes, allotment. Yes, yeah. I know what that is. There you go. See, now Captain Missy's also like taunting. Izzy says, I have strawberry cake with cream cheese frosting. <gasps> I have that too. Well, you know what my dessert's going to have to be? Cream cheese frosting. Just nope. Right a bagel with uh, with button with, with butter on it. That's my that's my dessert tonight. That's I would like that too. I just got bagels. That was in my uh that was in my grocery order today. The good in part, the order not, where they uh, also gave me four green bell peppers. Which are not dessert, for anyone asking. No. My friend hey, was like Ain't and if you're really hungry, you can go like get a get a dozen donuts or something. You totally They'll disappear. Could. You know what? You, totally you know that. what? The the key lime pie donut. The key lime pie filled donut from Krispy Kreme. Oh my god. I'm not saying you should go get donuts, but if you do go get donuts, get me a hot chocolate too, please. <laughs> I could make you a hot chocolate. It would take. It would not be hot by the time it got to me. I still have the Land O'Lakes uh, hot Where's chocolate. The finger emoji. Look, man. Y- y- Where's your legs work? Uh, the finger emoji. What, baby? On. What? I mean, I can do this. I'm good. Finger guns. <laughs> I don't know if anyone I subscribe to has a middle finger emoji. I mean, here's a thumb. The thumb work. <laughs> oh, Banyan, if you came over, I would make you hot chocolate. I would also make John hot chocolate. So you guys need to come over. We we, we need this little guy with 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 a, with a. Well, no, we probably don't, but. It would be very yes, cute. Yes, because okay. middle finger is like curse words, and and it's not a well, not then a thing. My response to Banyan is that get wrecked. <laughs> yeah, the finger emoji is on Discord. Or I can Good give. Enough. There we go. Boom. Right. Almost like we need events where people can meet up. Oh, he's I could cream. I could bring a thermos of hot chocolate. You know, better yet, I could bring a thermos like I always do to Adepticon because I always bring. Well, I don't drink coffee anymore, but I always brought my coffee maker and a thermos. Now I can now I can bring my tea bags and a thermos and make tea, or or I can make a hot chocolate. And put it in the thermos, and then, and then when I run into you guys, then you can have hot chocolate. I mean, technically, I have hot chocolate upstairs. I just don't have milk, so I have to make but it with water. It's not which the is delicious, fine. creamy, rich Land Lake hot chocolate. Uh, no, it's Swiss Miss, and they have like two packets of more premium stuff that I've gotten as gifts. I also have a jar of just the uh, the, the tiny little marshmallows, like cereal marshmallows. Legionnaires suggests a thermos of bourbon. I like that idea, too. I like where your head's at. Yeah, yeah. You bring the bourbon, I'll bring the hot chocolate, and we can mix them together. Because you know what? That's yummy. I was thinking more right, Kahlua. Right, Banyan hot too. choco shot. Also, Bailey's uh, Irish cream in hot chocolate. Delicious. Oh, now we're speaking we are, my language. We are also still totally not, have not even broached the subject of, <laughs> actually we have technically tangentially broached the subject of our topic by talking about what we want to drink at uh, Adepticon or any convention where we all meet up. Technically speaking, I'm not sure that was a tangent. I'm pretty sure that was just a perpendicular intersection point. That was honest. right on target. Uh, that was in the crosshairs. I believe that's under the even a blo- broken clock is tw- right twice a day. Exactly, and I'll take it. Yeah. Technically. Technically. 
technically correct. Right. White tall duck. That's kind of correct. Yeah. yeah. The white's done. The white so it's funny. Done. I was looking at that uh, at that paint scheme and thinking, even if you didn't use the color shift blue, I think a good deep blue with black and white would still be a great paint, or the green and the white would be a great, or green and black would be a great paint scheme. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. It's. I just wanted the color shift because it kind of makes it futuristic and it's sci-fi. Well, it's shiny, damn it. That's, I it mean, is. it's shiny. I mean, you if could use gloss varnish on the If the future is shiny, blue. then... Well, I mean, Firefly taught us the future is shiny, right? Yeah. Even when it's grimy, it's still shiny. Yep. In the grimy, dark future, there is only shiny. <laughs> Unless you've got like <laughs> speeder Vespas, then they're kind of shiny too. Oh. Only shiny. <laughs> Man, there was an argument headed about that at the game store this weekend. Did you punch somebody shiny in the face? Shiny chrome, yes. Yes. Told him get bent. Look, Tau, shiny. Space Marines, shiny. Orcs. Gore. You know, uh, Tau, Tau with color shift paints would look pretty good. Yeah. It would look very pretty. I mean, I'm not going to play Tau. I have standards, but. Yeah, I, I have oh, they're no the new broken hotness. whatsoever to play Tau. I don't know what it is about Tau. I just, I don't know. The aesthetic of them. Just... No. It's a near it miss. Doesn't... You're like, yeah. That's, I mean, that's cool, but it's I don't like want to play that. They got these robot-y kind of, you know. No, 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 no. What I do want to play is Crew because Crew seem awesome. They, yes, I would agree with that. I liked the Crew. That's my favorite part of Tau, but I think it's because they're, I don't know, recognizable as creatures and not like faceless, yeah. robotic, you know. All encased in the town looked too close to a human. You're like, yeah, sure, it's just a human. Whatever. Sure, you're yeah, different. They got three around. toes instead of five. Whatever. That's so whatever. It's still prime number. I don't know. Whatever. Can I uh, count? I, I wish I could uh, take bits that I like from each army and make an army. A so like army. That's, what, that's what orcs do. Isn't that I, what orcs do? Not really. I, I love Kroot. I love the fucking castle and robots for Admech. That sort of 50s vibe robot. They look so cool. Mm-hmm. Not anyone agrees with me, which is fine. Huh. I, I just love the, the, the totally retro vibe off of them. And I like bits of everything. Like, I love the, uh, the uh, Corvus Black Star that the Death Watch get. Just a cool looking flyer. I'm like, it vaguely looks like That's it could good. fly, theoretically. Not really, but kinda. So yeah, there are there are little things from every army that I like. And there are some armies that I like more of. Yes. So when I was thinking of doing orcs, I had this idea to do a looted wagon using a one of the Tau uh tanks and i don't remember what they're called it's probably a devilfish or a hammerhead yep. yeah yeah i think it was yeah it was one of those big gun I still is the hammerhead it. i still have it in the box somewhere and i was gonna just like s- squeeze on treads from a uh a land raider or a i don't remember what it was i think it want- was a land raider i got a story for you now kathy this is pertinent to your conversation <laughs> when I got, uh, I was getting into 40k hardcore after only playing fantasy for a while, and I had a couple fantasy armies. The guy's like, "Man, I really want a fantasy army, and I really want Dogs of War." I'm like, "Well, I've got Dogs of War. I really need 40k army." He's like, "I'll trade you straight up, as long as it's reasonable number of models. You know, my orcs for your for your Dogs of War." So we traded. He had made a looted wagon out of an Eldar Falcon. <laughs> He literally cut the treads off an old rhino and put them on the bottom of it. It's, this is what I want to do. <laughs> he, he took plastic card and, like, the fins in the front of the falcon 
Uh-huh. He plaster carded there so, like, boys could stand there. Oh, my God, that's amazing. I once extended one of the old rhinos, you know, the old small ones. Yeah, yeah. I once extended one of those with plastic card. It was like a limousine of, of old rhino. And uh, and I have that for my Dark Angels. I had, I was like, why should I not just use Mark II whatever, Bucket. you know, you things for. So, I, yeah, so I just made it bigger oh. in that way. And. I figured if it's all painted and it matches, then it's all going to seamlessly fit in the sort of, you know, and some of it's going to look more retro, but that will just make it cooler, right? Yeah. But one of, it's not like one of my 40K bo- books says to take a deodorant bottle and make a grav tank out of it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I've seen people it do that with that. that. Seen it's literally it. in the Rogue Trader book. Yeah. And it looks good. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff I'd like. I don't know what I would play if I had to play. I mean, honestly, I want to play Knights or Death Watch if I had to play 40K. I, but. I've, I've kind of been... I enjoyed 40K when I was playing it in 4th edition and early 5th edition. 4th really edition was the best edition. 4th edition was like par excellence, like their best 40K rule set. It got a little crazy with the power creep, but that could have been solved with better people in charge. But the um, war rule set was really good. And and then I got into fantasy, and I got so I got away from all that. But lately, I've just been thinking I I'd like to to to, to do some more forty k kind of stuff, or or just like maybe kill team kind of stuff. I don't know. I don't know. Like like death guard. Kill something. team is different, I but like I think kill team is probably the way to go. It's small it's model been, count. Yeah, yeah, I like a small it's the way of the future. Count. I like a game that's not, you know, two and a half, three hours long. But yeah, do, do you want to play, play it? I like to talk and visit. I'm not in a rush, so it's going to take longer than the, you know, the usual like two hours that you'd find in a tournament. Yeah, I mean, well, here's the thing: is like if you ever want to play orcs, you do not want to paint an orc army because it is massive. Mm-hmm. I really, when I wanted to do orcs, that was that was towards the end of fourth, right as it was switching over to fifth. And uh, the new orcs at the time came out, uh, and I really wanted to do Wazdaka and a bunch of bikes. But the only way you could do that was by ordering them from Forge World, which well, I, I mean, did not afford. Unless you can find enough of the old shitty bikes. But I, yeah, no, I couldn't find... I couldn't find any. I don't even know what the old shitty bikes look like. Uh, they're old and shitty. Legionnaire says, I do like the Hidden Valley Lovecraftian horror of the Gene Stealer. Yeah, Gene Stealer is interesting, but I have no... I love the vehicles. In, uh, they look so cool. The vehicles just look so cool, though. They're like... Like, like Tau are my last pick, and Tyranids are my second to last pick, I think. I think Tyranids would be my last pick. I just don't don't dig on that. I think f- painting them would be more fun than painting oh, now, though. I think painting them would and be that's, a fucking and that's, boot. Yeah, and that's kind of where... That's what puts them over Tau yeah, for me. They'd be much more interesting to paint. Like, you, you want to like Tau battle suits, but then they're just, like, kind of meh. Yeah. They're, they're fine. Boring. but the, Yeah, exactly. That's sort of part of why I got into Infinity when I did, because their tags are like Tau Battle Suits, just they're, fucking awesome! Yes, they're really interesting. They're yeah. interesting, and I did paint a tag for somebody, and uh, and I enjoyed it. But yeah, the yeah the Crisis Suits just, I don't know. It's never they quite... They don't do anything for me. Yeah. Could, couldn't do it. I'm going to stick with the... Uh, I gave away all my... Uh, I don't know if I told you guys. I gave away all my... Uh, Add mech to my uh, cousin. Yeah, He's looking for a new army. I'm like, yeah, of, uh, ad you know, they're cool, but I'm like, I don't need all this, all these models. You need to play an army. Go, okay. have fun. I still have knights. I still have death watch. That's what I'm, I'm interested in. I still I, have the Geller Pox, and now, now I have. Now I have the extra heavy gel gloss varnish. 
so I can finish the gross, slimy bases that I wanted to do for the Geller Pox. Awesome. I actually thinking about it, I have uh the Gathering Storm box with the Eldar not Avatar but Avatar thing and <laughs> and all for the uh their third fac fourth faction. Their fourth faction. I have an old school Eldar avatar sitting here primed and uh with a base ready to be painted at some like point. The, the new the Eldar are, temp- are tempting yeah, me a little one. bit. And uh, if they came out with a new avatar, it might be too much to resist. Because. But they I'm... have the Forge World one, don't they? Yeah, I don't want to pay for that. I wouldn't either. I don't blame you. That's why I have the old school one. Like, I'll be honest. Like, if I want to play Eldar, I want GW to actually fucking make models. I want Warp Spiders that came out after I graduated high school. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. New warp spiders would be amazing. Like, someone pointed out that warp spiders and Skaven poison wind globideers are both the same age. <laughs> For fuck's sake, GW, what the fuck are you doing? Not only are you using models from the fucking 90s, the... 90s. 30 years ago. <laughs> oh, Four were they fuck- hinted at? Legionnaire says, I think warp spiders were hinted at. Like, like, kind of like coming soon hinted at? Like coming within the next year? I don't know, I mean... I'm just impressed it's not all space marines all the time right now. It's still pretty much what it is. I still, uh, I have a fondness for my old Dark Angels, but I still would rather play them as Chaos. I mean... At one point, they were considered the top army for about three months. They are Chaos, you're right, John, and that, that was what I felt like way That's what Cypher is going back to the Golden Throne to tell them. Those motherfuckers ain't loyal. That's what I, uh, that's what I've always felt. That would have been a down great down in my twist. soul, I felt Dark Angels are chaos, and I think that's what drew me to them, because ever since a thousand years ago when my brother said, hey, there's this game called Warhammer, and here's the books, and you know what, uh, make an army. And I looked through the books, and I said, I think I want corn flesh hounds or demon whatever's. It was a long time ago, like a long, long time ago, like like second edition or third edition, long time ago fantasy. I don't really remember, but I did make up an army list, and it was all corn. And that was my very first army list that I ever made for Warhammer anything. But so so chaos. That's my point. Chaos yeah. has always been the thing that draws me to Warhammer. Yeah, my I'm, first I'm, Blood Bowl team, chaos. Chaos is a good team. I, I just wish GW had been braver when they did it. I just think they knew they'd piss off too many fanboys, so they didn't actually make that a thing. But I thought that would have been a great twist that they were actually fucking falling to chaos, and no one really knew. And mm-hmm. Cypher was going back to the Golden Throne with, uh, you know, the Lion Sword to be like, hey, those fuckers ain't loyal. I'm the fallen, but, uh, you know, here I am telling you because I'm actually one of the ones who hasn't fallen to chaos. But they're not brave enough to do that. And I don't blame them. It would be a potentially problematic thing. They would yeah. piss off a lot of people. And you should probably avoid pissing off your customers, even though I think it'd be a great, great story element. It would be. I'm all for making a better know. story. I don't know how many people would be pissed off. There have been rumors about that since the beginning. I know one who would be super duper 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 pissed. Who's that? Chris Marshall. Like I know all of your friends and acquaintances. No, it's, it's Chris Marshall. You do know him. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Marshall, the chaos. Uh, he's not here, unfortunately. I think he's resting. He, he has uh, COVID. Oh. So. oh, poor guy. It seems like he's doing okay, but Good. it's a motherfucker. 
But yeah, that would have been great. I mean, like that's that's the thing. Like if you anyone, if you make your fiction, don't be afraid to do hard stuff like that. You might lose some people, but you'll gain a lot of respect from people. People um, will appreciate the story of it all. Yeah, like I read a book series by my favorite author, and in the second book, he kills off what I considered the main character. Apparently, he was not the main character. So I left the sour taste in my mouth, but I did appreciate him telling his story, even though I'm sure he knew it was going to piss people off. Mm-hmm. And eventually, I'll go back and read the story again. I mean, just look at George R. R. Martin. Uh, he's a little excessive at it, but yes, he's a good, killing, good example. Killing people off right and left. People seem to love that. I would say uh, Hickman and Weiss is probably a better example because, uh, in my opinion, they write a more balanced story, let's say. Mm-hmm. You know, they kill off some main characters when it's, it's got to be done. And some of them are just because they're old and it happens. What was I just watching? Oh, I will talk about it in the media section, which is only three minutes away. Dang it, really? Shit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, Gonzo, respectfully, I believe we took your topic and said, fuck your topic. That's fine. That's the reason why we had this podcast. Uh, we talked a little bit about um, convention things. Yes. Sort of. Most of it, I think, was before we actually started recording. We talked about having a thermos of hot chocolate at a convention for thirsty or, friends. Or a thermos of bourbon. Or bourbon. Or, you know, you you bring the bourbon, I bring the hot chocolate, we meet, we combine them. I see all the good our things combined, happening. We make very happy people. Yes. That's what we're all about. And this may have been a little stronger than I should have had. <laughs> So your measurements were a little off. Oh no, my measurements were fine. The ratios it's are just, fine. Just, just maybe shouldn't have been as much as I did. <laughs> or maybe it should have been. Maybe it should have. Should have, would have, could have. I mean, haven't ranted, but oh, I'm sure it's coming. I feel one coming. I haven't ranted. What were we talking about before we started? Oh, it, it, it's coming. Gonzo's going to review it. It'll come. Okay, okay, okay. We might as well switch I feel to like we were talking section. about something. We were talking we had, about something like, where Kathy was ranting. I mean, it, I think it's the same thing. But uh, oh, okay, okay. So there you go. Two more minutes, and you'll get to hear. We we can just switch now. Let's just switch now. Hold on. Let me also. Get you can paint also, while you're fucking talking no, about movies. No, huh? negative. Yes, no, you can. Negative. No, negative. No, negative. We can talk about movies even though the overlay isn't on. So we could. Why don't you Absolutely. begin, John? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> let me just switch around. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I only have like five <laughs> or six. Look, here comes Tyson. Uh, only five or six. I have like only one five and or a six. half. I mean, like I kind of have one. Uh, one second here. Tyson Mason. You coming in to interrupt. There we go. So, the only thing close to a feature length thing I did, I watched some episodes. If I finished Bubblegum Crisis, I'll talk about I'll give you a final rating on that Yay. later. But the only thing really full length I watched was a documentary on the Lamborghini Countach, which more specifically on the Cannonball Run Countach. Oh. Huh, okay. Cool. Uh, it's on YouTube. You can just call, just Google, just look up uh, the Cannonball Run Kuntash. And it's very cool because they do it in a good modern documentary style where they're telling you about it, but they also tell you all the tangential things about, like, the Cannonball Run or the Cannonball Baker Memorial Rally that are related to it. And uh, I loved the hell out of that documentary. It was great. They interviewed all the people they could. Um, they had the wife of the guy who started the cannonball, the cannonball, because he's unfortunately passed. They had uh, a couple cannonball pe- uh, participants, and they talked about it related to the actual, um, the actual race and everything. Where is this on? Uh, it's on YouTube. Okay. The tubes of you. Uh, so, Gonzo, I have a. Uh, a problem here? What? Two problems, actually. Uh-huh. Just unrelated. 
Uh, one, it will not let me redeem Meow Gonzo Meow. And when what? the fuck did you change that to 15 minutes, son? Nah, son. <laughs> I didn't an change hour. that. I'll check on that one. No, I didn't change that to 15 minutes. Let me check. It says 15 minutes. See, he's trying to be sneaky, folks. Don't let him get away That's with it. That's cheap. <laughs> That's cheap. Uh, yeah, it's on. It's on. Uh, it's on YouTube. It is quite actually. No, fuck it. Hold on one second. I'm gonna cheat, and I'm just gonna give you. And one thing I know about it is, one thing I really like about it also is there are good scenes of the Countach and that sound of it. I don't know if everyone's a car guy. I'm not super car guy, but man, it just sounds Come awesome. Here, buddy. And there's a lot of good information on it. I definitely suggest. It. I am unshockingly going to give it uh, zero space herpes. It was a great documentary. I love the style. I think there should be more stuff in that style. I love just it's 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 sort of the same way some people do it for game stuff. Like I I listened to it and it sounded a lot like when uh, uh, Tex from the Black Pants Legion does his. Battletech lore videos. He does it like a documentary, but in this exact style where he tells you everything related to the topic. It's great. I love it. Uh, and it made me want to watch Cannonball Run and Cannonball Run 2, but I did not that end up with enough time. And I haven't seen Cannonball Run in uh, probably 20 years. Uh, I'm sure I watched it recently. I have it on DVD. On DVD. I do uh, want to see... I've... Cannibal Run 2 again. I haven't seen that in a while. Plus, Speed Zone or Cannibal Run 3, depending on how you look at it. I feel like perhaps I need a double feature of Cannibal Run and Cannibal Run 2 in my life soon. You could triple feature that if you want. Mm -hmm. Because John Candy's in the third one. Ah, Forgot about that. It's not a great movie. It's the least, but it's still enjoyable. It had faded from its star, and I'm going to tangent onto Cannibal Run a little bit. <clears throat> you realize at the time that Cannibal Run came out, every fucking one was in it. Everybody. I mean, it was like, like everybody. Uh-huh. I miss that style of movie where you just yes. have actors going, no, I don't want millions of dollars. This looks like a fun time. I walk and fucking want to be in on it. I, uh, you know also it was a great movie for that? Was... Mars Attacks. Which yeah. was also like 20 years ago. More than I mean, 20 years ago now. It was a great bit of everyone wanting to be in it. I wasn't a super fan of the content. It was a little too much for me, but it was I loved crazy. having everyone in it. It was crazy. But you have to watch it right after you watch Independence Day. You need to watch them together, like one before the other, or you know, but, but yeah, watch Independence Day, watch Mars Attacks, and, and Mars Attacks is even funnier. Independence Day is, yeah, it's worth it. It's a good yeah. double feature. And I saw a little, I watch a lot of little documentary clips from, on YouTube from actors about movies or TV shows. And I'd watched one from Jamie Farr about the Cannibal Run and the Cannibal Run 2 that was super fun. He just tells her, like, we were just all having fun making it. You know, you love being in on a movie like that because all your buddies are there having a great time. And th- it carries through to the screen for the first two, definitely, because it just seemed like they're having a great time. Like the ocean, like the oceans movies, like Oceans Eleven and yeah, Thirteen, yeah, yeah. Twelve, not quite as much, but close. It just seems like they're having a fucking good time. So I love those. Uh, again, the Cannibal Run Countach, Supercar Legend, uh, Zero Space Rippies. I enjoyed the fuck out of it. I put the link in here, or you can just search it on YouTube. It is also if you just search Countach, it is the second thing that shows up. So. There you go. Enjoy the crap out of that. Kathy? I'm taking a note right now. <laughs> so that I can find it later. I know I could click on the link, but, you know, my searching is... Or you could ask John later. I'll, I'll find different. it. So I watched yesterday with a friend of mine in Discord. I watched Deep Rising. <sighs> Oh, man. oh, deep rises! I had seen a retrospective about it a long time ago, and I could swear that I swear we talked about that once before. Uh, Anyways, I feel like maybe I feel like we did too. I think Gonzo may have talked about it. Gonzo, yeah, I think so. Did you watch it recently, like uh, last well, year or so? Probably <laughs> last yeah. year. Maybe 
so so I had never seen it before. Uh, and my friend was like, feel like watching a monster movie? And I was like, sure, sure. And uh, it was Deep Rising. And I the the only actor who I remember being in it, there were a bunch of familiar faces, but the one actor, the main the star, is Treat Williams, who I love. Oh, he's a that's fantastic not the first person actor. I think of. And actually, yeah, he's, Treat Williams is definitely an underrated actor. He's a fantastic actor. You're thinking of the guy who plays the 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 leader of the mercenaries. I not I might have gotten my movies mixed up. I may be drunk. There's the the guy <laughs> who plays the leader of the mercenaries. For the life of me, I can't remember his name. And then the guy who who plays the cruise ship. This is where a cruise ship. Uh, is disabled in the water uh, on its maiden voyage. And look, I took notes. Here's my notes. I will read them <laughs> to you. Deep Rising. Awesome. Treat Williams. Um, it was, I think, 1992. Oh, I know why I remember this now. Okay, go ahead. Um, asshole mercenaries hire a boat to take their cargo to an unknown destination. Uh, Treat Williams and his crew of two don't ask questions. So they have no idea what the cargo is. They don't even know where they're going. They're just relying on these guys to tell them the coordinates. They don't know who they're going to meet. They know nothing about their, you know, what's going on. Uh, A cruise ship makes its inaugural voyage. Someone sabotages the ship for unknown reasons, which will later be revealed. Um... So these are the two the two things that are happening simultaneously. And then a mysterious creature attacks the cruise ship after it's been disabled unexpectedly. And uh, the mercenaries are not only assholes, they're also morons, which is what you learn <laughs> throughout Monster as movie. the movie goes along. Yeah. So they're mercenary. Oh, they're super one-dimensional, very cartoonish kind of bad guys. They're just like... It's like a comic book with a bunch of villains, and each villain has its own stereotypical uh, villain personality. Wow, I'm really skipping around, aren't I? Anyways, um, and then and then my I'm reading from my notes. So, is it more than just one creature, or is it a huge mass of tentacles? I said to my friend, I'm like, are there going to be tentacles in this movie? There's going to be tentacles. Because it's a giant sea creature, right? Right? Tentacles. He bet me $5. There's not going to be tentacles. I said, there's going to be tentacles. He owes me five bucks. Yeah, there are tentacles. <laughs> the tentacles so have tentacles. tentacles. That's how many tentacles yeah. there are. And it turns out that it was a one giant creature with a whole bunch of uh, tentacles that seem to all have minds of their own. Uh, but the special effects, like, my friend was like, I don't know about the CGI for this or whatever. I loved it. I loved the monster. I loved the tentacles. I loved their crazy little maws when they open up to just, like, engulf an entire person and then swallow them. Uh, I liked the one part where the guy gets spit out and, and he's, like, half digested. The, uh, makeup or effect for that was really cool. Um... I just, I really enjoyed all the crazy stuff, the blood splatter, the gross stuff, the the piles of uh, skeletal remains, the, <laughs> it, it, the tentacles, you know. Looks I liked like- how it just pushes itself through the, it's not even like it's going through the corridors, it's going through the walls, and, and, and everything is bent out of shape, and you can tell it's coming, and... And uh, the whole thing was very fun. It was a really enjoyable monster movie. And I absolutely love the end where they end up on this island. <laughs> All right. That's where I heard about it. So. Yeah, because it's, it's actually a prequel. It's not it's, what it's, it was going to be. Correct. It was supposed to be a. A prequel, prequel. to a King Kong movie because it's supposed to end up on Skull Island. Which hilariously is exactly what I said when I saw the ending, and I'm like, "Is it Skull Island?" I like, like they're playing 
I don't know if they were playing music or something, but the three of them are there, and it starts zooming out, and there's there's some sound, and I'm like, this is Skull Island, isn't it? It is. It was supposed to be Skull Island. It was supposed to start uh, uh, their MonsterVerse early. Um, uh, the movie podcast, listen to Junk Food Cinema, mentioned it on one of their podcasts. That's why it's in my head. Yeah. Because they mentioned it, and I'm like, ah, I had my movies twisted. But yeah, absolutely. Uh, which would have been a great thing and still can be a mental twist but it would have been it would have been a lot of fun to see them and just imagine uh, any, any it, it's just later it, unfortunately then because i yeah. think you could, you could fit it into this the skull island kong thing like they did the uh the uh john c Riley, but it time doesn't work out that way unfortunately cruise ship and all yeah. that and it di- it didn't do well at the box office at all if I remember correctly, it opened against things that were really good. Yeah, but but it's worth a watch. I really liked it. Uh, yeah, it's, it's my friend had it on DVD, so that's how we watched it. So I don't know if it's streaming anywhere. Yeah, this is definitely one where they would call it uh, a junk food. My my podcast because mm-hmm. the podcast mm-hmm. is doing call it, definitely call it junk food. So it released January in nineteen ninety eight. Oh, 98. Okay, that's more recent than I thought, even. So, yeah. I watched something very old school this week. We'll, yeah. we'll, we'll skip over to that one, because I wanted to talk about this one, because this one actually makes me kind of laugh. Um, and it's on Netflix. I watched the original 1991 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And man. Or, hold on. The best live action Ninja Turtles movie. Correct. <laughs> and man, did I, like uh, Sam Elliott or not Sam Elliott? Sam, uh, oh gosh, what is it? Rockwell. Yeah, Rockwell is in it, and I was like, because I saw him up and I saw him appear, and I'm like, wait, that's Sam. And it was wow. like, yep, that was him. But man, does that movie. Even though the special effects and the costumes and the rubber suits are of the time, it's still a good, solid, cheesy well, TMT, TMNT movie. Well, that's because it's based off of uh, one of their graphic novels. It's actually yes. the only TMNT movie that's actually based slightly loosely off one of their comics. It's actually based off the Leonardo comic. They just changed it to be Raph instead of Leonardo because they figured kids would like him better because... yeah. They can't portray Leonardo properly, but that is a rant for another time. <laughs> but I mean, it was it was still fun. I'm still watching it, and of course, the scene comes up where the turtle opens his mouth, and you see the eyes inside the mouth. You know, you just you can't you cannot unsee that now. I I've never <laughs> seen it, so I don't see it. Oh, I, I, I see it. Have that suspension of disbelief still, so it's good. But, but I yeah, mean, uh, Casey Jones still good, still yes. perfect in it. The perfect person to play Casey Jones. April O'Neil's fine. April yeah, O'Neil's great. Like the cast does their job well. Yeah, it it, it performed the way it was supposed to be. It didn't yes. go to the dark side of the turtles, but was enough to make it go exactly what it was supposed to be. I mean, so I'm not going to rant on the turtles, but at the time it came out, this is what the turtles were aimed at. The turtles mm-hmm. were aimed at kids. The cartoon had come out. Correct. The kids had latched on to the turtles, so you were never going to get serious turtles. So it's okay. And I think. Well, now it... all those kids are grown up. True. Mm-hmm. So. But you still now get shitty turtles them. movies. Yeah, you still get shitty. But I mean, I had a blast with it. It, it was still yeah. fun. It's still it's good, fun. solid fun. It's stupid. It's got some of the like you're you like you're like really oh yeah I remember why this was because they're like oh you're 15 minutes late. You know, ne- never pay full price Domino's. for for light pizza. <laughs> yep. And I'm like, oh man, it's a product of its time. Yeah, like, it is a product of its, it's time. It's amusing. It's enjoyable. I wouldn't buy it on DVD, but if it was streaming for free, I'd give it a watch. Yeah, I had fun with it. I only give it a one because one nostalgia kicks in. Uh, it's still a solid. I feel like I'd have to give it a two because it wasn't perfect when it came out. Also, to be fair, I am a big turtles guy. Yeah. But I'm a classic Turtles guy. I do appreciate them using some classic material for it, though. Yeah. It was solid. a hell it's of a lot better fun. than the next movie. Oh, yeah. Go, Ninja. Go, go Ninja. Ninja. Go, Ninja, go. Go. <laughs> ah, Vanilla Ice, fuck you. Fuck you and the horse you rode it on. 
So, John, <laughs> you want to go with the one that we wanted to talk about? I'll lead off. You watched it. I okay. Didn't. So, um, on Apple TV, um, they rebooted Fraggle Rock. And it's not even a reboot. It is just a continuation uh, type Rock. thing. And as soon as I saw the Fraggles, and as soon as the song came on, I could quote the whole fucking song and sing it the whole time. And that is just the perfect part of what this show is. Fraggle Rock is about these creatures that live in this part of the earth and their uncle goes out into outer space, AKA earth. Uh, and it's on, uh, Apple TV and it still as good as it was. Um, the characters are the same. I didn't see any issues with them. Uh, the voices of course are, are a bit off. Um, the old man is not there. Uh, yeah, I, unfortunately, I'm fairly certain he's passed. Correct. Um, and instead of being an old man, it is a African American lady, and she's like a college student. And she goes, "This is the reason why this place is a dump because I'm a college student trying to play for a place." Uh, the dog is still there. All the characters are still there. The trash heap, everything. I I had a good time. It was it was typical Fraggle Rock. Good music, good sounds, good story. You know, it was just good, solid, you know, definitely, here's my kids. If I had kids, watch this. You'll enjoy this, young kids. It's <laughs> it's good. I had no problem. I haven't only watched one episode, and I didn't see any issues with it. Doesn't mean I'm not going to see anything with everybody else, but so far, I'm having fun with it. But there is some controversy behind it. John, I don't know Controversy? More like the internet. Uh, yeah. Apparently, the internet is upset because, and I quote, the new Fraggle Walk is too woke. woke. Uh, first off, as soon as Ooh, someone whoa. says woke, I completely ignore them fuckheads because yeah. fuck them. Correct. If you're not using it ironically, fuck yourself. Anyways, this just in. Much like the last thing they were worried is going to become woke, which I'll spoil, was the X-Men since they're doing a new X-Men cartoon. Um, X-Men. Fraggle Rock, much like X-Men, is already fucking woke. <laughs> That's what it is. Yeah. It is all about people living together despite their differences. It is the fucking definition of woke. So, literally, if you have a problem with that, you're not a fan of the early Fraggle Rock, and you can go fuck yourself. Yeah. Fraggle Rock was great. I, I mean, I have last... Yeah, Fraggle Rock's awesome. Uh, it, the, it is the songs, those... the music, everything's great. That's the problem. Is I never some of those got things to that... see it because it was on HBO when oh. I was a kid, and we did not have that. Oh, that's sad. sad. Yeah, it was great. Another thing I owe my mom for, she we had HBO all the time when we were there. We didn't always have all the channels, but we had HBO, and HBO generally had the best stuff. So, yeah. I mean, another another notch in mom's belt for being awesome. Yeah, It was great. So, I, I'll give a full review after I watch it. I'll probably watch it tomorrow while I'm doing some projects. Uh, John? Uh, I finished, finally, the eighth episode of Bubblegum Crisis, uh -huh. 1980s uh, anime series. And uh, so the eighth episode is pretty much a standalone, but it's also the only time one of the characters gets to sort of be the main, which is cool. Um, and I felt this way about the last two episodes. I didn't talk much about the last episode, uh, Double Vision, which is sort of a callback to episode two. Um, the last two episodes feel like the most complete episodes, like they told the most story. Now, I think the, the, the seventh one, because it called back the second episode, some of the foundation blocks were there. But these last two felt much more complete than the other ones. All the other ones sort of felt like they were rushing it. And they did have to cut four episodes off the overall runtime, even way back in the 80s they had that shit. Um, but I did very much enjoy it. I'm going to give the overall series one space repeat just because it's dated and some of the things you're like oh that's your 2030s technology mm -hmm. <laughs> um and some of it just some of it's prescient they have you know little phones not quite as advanced as their cell phones but similar you're like okay cool they, they saw some of that but some of it you're just like really really <laughs> but that's cool and i hope to get kathy to review it because i'm going to send her my old copy since i bought it on blu-ray about halfway through I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, I've I think you'll. Seen it. I think you'll like it. It's good stuff. It is a little, also a little '80s Japanese, meaning 
I'm not going to say it's misogynistic, but it definitely has characters who run that route and they're supposed to be lovable scamp type of guys. You know how it is in the 80s. Mm-hmm. Stuff that would that shouldn't be okay nowadays, but never gets yeah. uncomfortable. Well, I'll tell you, uh, in the 80s, I did a fair bit of reading of fantasy novels. Oh. Uh, as oh. a child in the 80s, I I loved to read, and I went to the library, and I checked out books that were possibly older than what most kids my age were reading. Um, and so I did read a lot of things that were like that. So I do know what you mean, and... I was able to get past all of that bullshit stuff uh, to enjoy the core of what was going on. Although, I have to say, I did reread This Perfect Day by Ira Levin, which was written not in the 80s, but probably in, uh, I want to say, the 70s. Uh, I read it back then. I read it again (laughs) so many years later. Um, and I'm like, oh my god, the main character was such an asshole, and he was so rapey, and why the hell did I like this book? <laughs> I'll be honest, the 80s were very rapey, and it's and Japan's worse. I can tell you stories, I'm not going to, but let's just say Japan was worse. This it's doesn't so quite ever get there, and I also yeah. think you'll like it, because I think you'll like the music. It is very good music integrated into it and it's a very 80s style even if you won't understand any of the words because they're in japanese <laughs> but there you go one uh one space herpy i definitely recommend it if you uh like anime or if you like cyberpunk or if you like catching up classic stuff There's i like classic. cyberpunk and i have not mm. really had a chance to watch a lot of anime so i'm looking forward to it excellent I think it's just you, Gonzo. We, we didn't just watch me? much. Uh, let's talk about Boba Fett. I, I, I did watch uh, oh. something else. Oh, okay, go for it. Go, Kathy, go. I, I, I did watch the first two episodes of Bridgerton oh. tonight, oh. which Hello. is so Bridgerton. far to the opposite end of anything that Deep Hail Rising hijack. was. Deep Rising over here, Bridgerton over here. Um, I'm a huge Jane Austen fan. I have read Pride and Prejudice, Sense and Sensibility. Uh, I, I've, I've read things by the Bronte sisters. I'm like, I'm there for this show. <laughs> I, I watched the first episode and then I was like, let's see, it's 58 minutes long. How much time do I have before my podcast starts? <laughs> so I can I know that feeling another very well. episode in and I will watch it again tomorrow. <laughs> I love Bridgerton. I love the twist. I love, I love that it's not traditional. Uh, the music, that's where I fell in love with the band because there's one band um, that does modern pop tunes in orchestra That's versions funny you should say that because at the ball mm-hmm. in the second in the second episode they're going to a ball and i'm like oh my god this sounds so familiar yep. this song this th- not song but this tune yep it sounds so familiar but i can't place it but um, it, it and it's like all sort of like uh is it 1800s yes it it got that you know that whole feel and those kind of instruments and that sort of arrangement and everything and i was like this yeah is it's done by cool. a band called the vitamin string quartet and they take um music modern music and put it into a string quartet and that's where you that's the where you heard that um and that was what was this i can't remember exactly what song it was during that but i mean I'll have to look it up. I'll have to look it up on iTunes or whatever, but that's what it is. I mean, it's the first thing. If you type in vitamin string quartet on, yeah. on Google, it's vitamin string quartet Bridgerton. Yeah. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, but yeah, like I said, I've only seen the first two episodes. Um, and it's, it's been, it's interesting. It's, it really is like, like Jane Austen, but, but, there's comedy, there's diversity in the people that are playing all the characters, which I really appreciate. Yes. Um, it's solid. It is. It is. It's fantastic so far for the first two episodes. I've enjoyed it. I've watched all of it. 
can't wait for the next season, uh, even though they're doing they're following the books a little bit better. Uh, I didn't even know it was books. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know it was either. But I mean, I was watching it, and then I was catching up on like the cast of who's going to be in the next one because I guess each book is based off a certain family member, and so they're going to oh, go okay. going to change it up a little bit, um, type thing. So, but I mean, I enjoyed it. I I love it. I can talk to you about it. <laughs> uh, on the music thing, I want to mention one thing. So we, we, we shit on Pacemaker last week, uh, but we did say the intro was good. The band that does the intro song is called Wigwam, and that's their best song. Oh. <laughs> I listened to the entire album it was on, and that was far and away their best song, in case you're wondering. Do you feel like you took one for the team listening to the entire album? No, I don't feel like I took one for the team, but I also don't feel like I will ever listen to that album again. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that so, was it. That was my, like, zero space for bees so far for Bridgerton. Um, and, and probably, like, two for Deep Rising, because, you know. A loving two. Yes. I really enjoyed it, but, you know. Best film ever? No, not really. Still, oh, and I did, I did learn thanks to the Googles um, that Harrison Ford was the first person that they had in mind for the character that Treat Williams played. And while I was watching it, I said to my friend, "I'm like, he's like yeah. Han Solo." And then he even says twice, "I have a bad feeling about this." Treat <laughs> Williams does seem like a younger discount version of Harrison Ford sometimes. He's <laughs> not reason. younger, though. He's not. He's, he's, um, younger. he's younger than Harrison Ford. Is he, though? Is he? I mean... Or are they the same age? Because he was in hair. He's younger. Not by much. Not by much, right? Let's see here. <laughs> he is exactly but I'll nine tell you years what, young. In, he's nine years younger. In In... 1998 when that was filmed he was in good shape he was very fit yeah in 98 he would have been 47 um so i have two left one of them you did you see the new boba fett of course okay i thought this one was really good yes it explains the thing that everyone's fucking bitching about yeah and well not everyone but most of bitching about yeah and i'm gonna start with like Gonzo said, if your first thing is like, well, this isn't Boba Fett, motherfucker had 15 minutes of screen time in the original trilogy. <laughs> don't tell me what Boba Fett is. You don't yeah, fucking how know. How do you know what Boba Fett was? All you ever saw was him in case, you know, getting oh. Lando, or not getting Lando, getting Han Solo encasing Carbonite and then hauling him away. My and then. Like, well, he's the guy who disintegrates everyone. No. We know. And then he dies. Facts, in a he disintegrated. Like one person once, and Vader knows about it, and it's enough to say, don't disintegrate this guy, I want him alive. Yeah. I, I, I thought this episode was one of the best one so yes. far. Um, I, I enjoyed it. I And uh, uh, what's her name? Uh, from uh, Flashdance is the uh, Twi'lek who runs yeah. the bar. Yep. Has she aged? It doesn't look like no, it. No, it doesn't. <laughs> I enjoyed it. Uh, Jessica Thank Beals, you for reminding me that I Jennifer need to Beals? watch this. Yes. After um, I watched Bridgerton. <laughs> so the one thing I did want to talk about, and it came up on HBO Max, was The Last Duel. Uh, Ridley uh, Scott movie. Did horrible in the box office. Um, type yeah, I've not heard good things about it. That's the Wait, one with... Uh, the Last Duel. That's the one with the rape, right? Yes. I had zero interest in watching that, let me tell you right now. Zero interest yeah. in well, I mean, watching I like, a I like story medieval. about guys talking about somebody being raped. I, 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 I wanted to watch it because I like medieval time, you know, period pieces. Oh. And Ridley Scott, okay, let's see what it is. Um, you'll watch the same movie twice. Let me just put you that. I'm not going to spoil it. I'm not going to give it because it is kind of new out there. But you, you, you watch. Can spoil it all you want, really. I don't care. Yeah. But well, you watch the movie. Twice, one from one person's point of view and one person from the other person's point of view, and it. I actually fast forward. I was so bored. I was like, okay, I just want to see what happens in the end because I understand where the point of views are going. And so I'm just it's like, not as interesting as uh, as Hero, where you see many of the scenes multiple times based on 
who's telling it. Correct. Oh, it was that like was a movie. Yeah, I was not because what was interesting is Ridley Scott blamed millennials for the movie not doing so well. I said, "No, your movie's not good." Yeah. The movie's not good. Yeah, it was, ends too yeah. abruptly. It, it's, it has to be the movie not being good because the actors, there's a lot of good actors in yeah. this movie. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why you would think that people would be drawn to it, but also the content of this movie yeah. would probably not appeal to, I don't know, like, yeah. I'm just going to throw out a ballpark figure of, like, 40% of the population. Yeah. So I'm yeah. going to say this. Uh, this is something that uh, my ex-roommate Greekin said. You do not ever 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 need to put rape as a plot point in a fucking movie or 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 book or anything it does not need to be Freakins, 100% agree it, well, I mean, you can always tell it better some other way you don't have to put that in that is why the 80s were so fucking rapey as we said earlier because yeah. people yeah. were it was everywhere so people were like oh this is a thing that happens it should not be a fucking thing that happens I mean, I watch it. I, I mean, like I said, I like medieval time period pieces, you know, that are realistic, you know, type uh, thing. Let me just watch Sword of the Valiant instead, if <laughs> yeah. you like. Uh... Sword of the Valiant? Man. Wow. <laughs> but, I mean, it was it was a bad it was a bad telling of the story. Everything was done twice. You watch, you technically watch the movie twice. And from two different points of view. And it really wasn't even good from either point of view. It wasn't great all the way around um it and and the ending of it too was just very just cut short blase but done and they even like put up you know blurbs of what happened and everything it was like you knew that they either a ran out of money b ran out of time just half-assed it at the end of it and i was like if i want to watch a movie with armor and swords and castles I'm gonna watch Beastmaster, or I I'm knew gonna watch that was fucking yeah. <laughs> knew that was coming. Yeah. So I mean, <laughs> him him blaming millennials for it is wrong. I mean, this movie was just bad. It was not good. One, he put it out in theaters during this time. Nobody's gonna really gonna watch this in the theater. Yeah, yeah let's, millennials let's be aren't honest. going to theaters. Yeah, let's just, I love Marvel movies and Spider Man. I'm not going to see No Way Home because I'm not gonna risk a theater. Correct. I'll wait till the end of February. I don't care. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But I mean, this this was just this was just a piss poor movie, and I was upset because really Scott's good, but this was bad. This was not Ridley good at all. Scott is ancient. Maybe he doesn't know what good is anymore. I, and see, that's the thing. I think you know sometimes they just lose their touch. Look at even John Carpenter, who made tons of great movies. His last couple movies before he sort of quasi retired weren't good. Sometimes you just lose touch with what it is. Maybe, you know, who knows? He's just not reading the room well these days. No, or maybe it was, it just, was just his not views good. of what makes a good movie don't fit anymore. Maybe things have passed him by and he hasn't realized it. It's okay. Yeah. It happens to all of us. But overall, I pass. This has got like a four for me. Because it was, I literally Oof. fast forward because I knew it was coming. And I knew how this scene was going to go. I knew how this character was going to act from their point of view. So I was like, nah, You know what I'm this done. means? This means Beastmaster absolutely deserves a three. <laughs> I haven't seen this movie, but based on the description, I will upgrade it to a 3.75. <laughs> for you, Kathy. Thank you. Thank you, John. I appreciate it. Because you know what Beastmaster doesn't have? Rape. Rape. True. It has ferrets. It has mostly naked Mark Singer. It has a tiger. It has uh, naked ladies. That's ferrets. And goo monsters. It also has Rip Torn. Rip Torn is worth at least a quarter of a space hurt. <laughs> Amazing. Space also, it has those, uh, those those vampire things that hug you and then suck all the juices out of you. Yeah. Those were a little creepy. Yeah. Yes, they were. I loved them. Goo monsters. <laughs> yes. So. Three well, guys. That is our show for tonight. We appreciate everybody coming out. Um, we will be back next Sunday. Uh, John will definitely be doing some uh, MechWarrior. Uh, yes, so MechWarrior Online attention. tomorrow night, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard, Standard Time. I'm going to try and complete two events at once. Yay! How do you complete two events at once? 
uh, because one requires me to get wins with certain mechs, and the other requires me to get certain types of damages. So oh. I will outfit the certain mechs with the certain types of weapons and try and complete both at once. Ooh, good luck. And then I will most likely, this Friday, we will be rolling dice on our map uh, oh. to create our world. Uh, I hey. actually I did some pre-rolling, and I have too many dice, so I had to pull some stuff out. Did I was you just like, say you have too many dice? Yeah, when you roll them out, it it's just too many dice in the pool. He's going to roll for the purposes. Correct. So okay, I had to okay, pull okay. those out. Um, <laughs> so I've been doing some practice with it just to test it out because we'll roll those on air, uh, and we'll uh, pre get everything up. Uh, and also, I've... go ahead, John. So it won't be on streaming, and it'll be a little ways for you guys to get it on actual podcast version, but Session Zero of my role-playing game is coming up this Saturday as well. Oh, which I heard some rumors about Genesis, and I will talk about that off air. Oh. So, uh, and don't forget, go check out Kathy on her channel. Uh, yep. I mean, you can see her do her painting uh, Tuesday through Thursday and listen to her tell her story on Friday. So don't forget to go check that out. Um. Guys, please make sure you go get your vaccine. Please make sure that you go get uh, your booster. Please take care of yourself, wear your mask, so on and so forth. We want to see everybody at HugCon 2022. Um, Please, please be safe. For more than dice, I'm Gonzo. I'm John. I'm Kathy. Good night. We're going to send y'all off to Key Lime Prime, too, by the way. He is back again. Hey, you forgot the rats again. You know, it's weird how much we talk about uh, Beastmaster on here. That's me. I talk about it. I know I do. Like, I, it's a terrible movie, but I love it. <laughs>